والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المبين وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد سورة بكرة ورس 257 Allah is the wali the guardian the friend the guide of those who have faith on him who believe in him who believe in the oneness of Allah and he takes them he brings them into light from the darkness ladies and gentlemen today i would like to discuss what it means to be human and how we can relate the religion that we call islam the literal meaning of the religion is peace how can we relate being human with being a muslim and how imperative and important it is to understand this philosophy the reason that the image of islam has been disfigured over years and years since the revelation to the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is the only reason is that the religion was hijacked for political power for the gain of wealth for worldly causes by those who didn't have proper faith in allah and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam had there been complete faith in allah and had they followed the teachings of the quran quran that repeatedly emphasizes that you cannot be a muslim that you cannot be a mu'min that you cannot be faithful that you cannot be a believer if you don't prefer the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam over your own self over your self interests over your parents over any worldly desires any relationships anything any possession in this world the quran repeatedly emphasizes that you cannot claim to be a believer in god a believer of allah a believer in the religion of islam unless you give supreme authority to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and you follow his teachings beyond pursuing any of your personal desires but unfortunately there were people who used islam to gain worldly possessions positions of power wealth as islam started spreading and these are the people who did not adhere to the prophet's final and the most important message about which the quran says al yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati today we have completed your religion today we have completed our blessing of hidayat for you and today we have made this blessing whole for you what happened that day that was the day of hadir khum when the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
told the Muslims, the Muslims who were present in that field of home, and also said, advised those people who were present at that day to spread this message, Man Kunto Mola, Fahaza Aliun Mola. He introduced Malai Kainat Mola Ali alayhi salam as his successor, Wasi, Khalifa. And he said, whoever considers me his or her Mola must consider Ali as their Mola. Man Kunto Mola, Fahaza Aliun Mola. Whoever considers me Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their guide, their prophet, they must believe in the wilaya, in the imamat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And even this final, the most important message about which the Quran says, Balligh, please, Prophet, convey this message. If you don't convey this message, then it's like you have not conveyed anything about Islam. Why? Because as Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamullah later describes in her sermon of Fidik, she says that Vilayat, this belief in Vilayat, this belief in Imamat, it is mandatory for you because this is the belief that combines, unifies the Muslim Ummah. So just imagine that those people, as soon as the Prophet ﷺ left this world, as soon as the Prophet ﷺ left this material world, these people, they did not pay any attention to that allegiance to the message of Man Kunto Mawla Fahaza Ali Mawla. They stopped respecting this important message of Vilaya from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then history just shows us how the image of Islam was disfigured, it was misused, how the religion was misused, how it was spread wrongfully by sword whereas Mawlai Kainat Mawla Ali alayhi salam who was the bravest who was the most steadfast about whom the angels were singing La Fata Illa Ali La Saif Illa Zulfikar there's no man like Ali there's no sword like Zulfikar the one who was always there without fear in all the battles for Islam, the one who was always protecting the Prophet ﷺ, right from his childhood, right from the Dawat of Zilashira, right from the night of migration from Mecca to Medina, when he slept on the Prophet's bed to save his life. When he didn't consider his own safety, when he was always standing in battle to protect the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even when everyone else ran away, like in the Battle of Uhud. So even Mawlai Kainat, Mawla Ali Salam, he never believed in spreading Islam by sword. He never did. There was always the concept of peace. Islam literally means peace. There are various books, there are various traditions in which it is said that whether war results in victory or defeat, according to Imam Ali alayhi salam, war was always, always considered harmful. So when we talk about humanity, we must realize that Islam is so aligned with humanity. Islam is so aligned with love and compassion. It is such a natural religion 
which is so close to the human psychology. It is so close to the rahmat, to the blessing, to the compassion that Allah feels for his uh, creations that Allah feels for humanity and how Allah rewards, encourages human beings who are compassionate towards other human beings. There are various sayings starting from the Quran and then the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad and several sayings of Imam Ali and our 12 Imams, several sayings which say, be kind be kind to your fellow human beings and Allah will be kind to you. So Imam Ali salam, whether even if absolute victory was guaranteed, he was always against war. He constantly tried to see that the matters with enemies were settled without any bloodshed. And this is so evident from the history that followed. The death of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he left this world and how the Muslims at that time were influenced by those who had money, power, wealth, political connections and those who usurped Mawlai Kainat Mawla Ali salam's right as the successor, as the Imam based on Man Kunto Mawla Fahaza Ali and Mawla after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Imam Ali Alayhi Salaam, who was the one man responsible for the victory of Badr, Hunayn, Khaybar, he did not raise his sword, even though he would have been rightful to do so. But he did not want bloodshed. For him, Islam represents peace. He used to advise his sons, Imam Hassan salam, Imam Hussein salam, not to incite anyone to fight. And there, there's this famous incident when somebody from the opposite side, somebody who Imam Ali salam, was fighting in a battle, spat on him. And Imam Ali salam, just walked away. He did not fight him. He said that my fight is only for Allah. My sword only is raised in the name of Allah. And if myself, even if there is a slight suspicion or doubt that my own self gets involved, my own nafs gets involved, I abandon this fight. So Imam Ali salam, used to advise his sons, Imam Hassan salam, Imam Hussain salam, never to incite anyone to fight. When we read the many sermons in Nehjul Balagha, we realize that the fundamental aim of Imam Ali salam, was to promote stability. was to strive in the cause of humanity, compassion. As Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamullah in her Fidak sermon, when she describes Imam Ali salam, and to the ladies of Medina, when they visit her, when she was ill during her last days, she kept telling, she kept reminding them that Abul Hassan, Imam Ali alayhi salam, his only desire and want from this dunya, this world, is to feed somebody who's hungry or to give water to somebody who's thirsty. This is all Imam Ali alayhi salam wants from this world. So there have always been these two schools of thought. The people who worship this world, the possessions, the power, the wealth of this dunya, this world. And then there are people who worship Allah, who truly believe in the oneness of God. When you believe in the oneness of God, when you believe in Tawheed, when you 
want to be a believer, then you actually abide by everything Allah says. And what does Allah say? Don't become a slave of worldly desires and wishes. Because this is actually cruelty to one's own nafs when one becomes a slave of one's own desires. And then you are not consider you, you are not considering God, Allah, as the only one you worship. You start worshipping your desires, you start worshipping your own ego, you start worshipping your greed. These desires become your idols. The idol doesn't have to be of stone or wood or gold or silver. It could be one of the worldly desires that you're pursuing. It is what is of utmost importance to you. It is what you desire the most. If you desire Allah the most, if your supreme primary wish and want is to please Allah, is to become his abd, his servant, then you do what you consider is righteous. Then you do what you consider would purify your soul, would elevate, elevate your soul. And that includes thinking about others. Like Imam Ali salam once said, to feed oneself is the food of the body, but to feed others is the food of your soul. And Imam said, this body is going to go under dirt and dust under the earth once you're buried. So don't worry too much about pampering this body, nourishing this body. But your soul that comes from Allah, that stays forever. So worry about nourishing your soul. And what does he say is nourishing your soul? It's feeding others. So Imam Ali alayhi salam, when we read several sermons of Najul Balagha, we realize that Imam Ali alayhi salam always wanted to promote peace, stability. Whenever his enemy called for peace, Imam Ali alayhi salam accepted their request wholeheartedly. Look at the Sulay Hudaybiya. When the prominent companions of the Prophet, they were saying, Nauzubillah, we have never doubted the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wisdom so much as we have done on this day. And the Quran says, Inna fatahna laka fatan mubina. Today we have given you bright, prominent success. It's fatah, it's success. But those who were captivated by this world, who couldn't see beyond what was happening in front of them, who couldn't see through the same wisdom, the hikmat that God had given his Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who was signing that peace treaty with the mushrikeen, with the idolaters. Quran says, Quran endorses, this is fath mubin this is bright and prominent success. So for Allah, success is saving humanity, saving human beings. Like it is said, one who kills one human, one human being, he has killed the entire humanity. And one who saves one human life has saved the entire humankind. So Imam Ali salam never opted for war, never, unless the war was imposed on him. So this is very, very important. And even in war, there were ethics. You were never supposed to burn a tree. You were never supposed to attack someone who was unarmed. You are never supposed to harm or hurt women, women, children, civilians, people who are not fighting, never. And you never force people to convert to Islam. So Imam Ali salam picked up his sword, his Zulfikar, only when he had exhausted all options to avoid bloodshed. So based on that principle, let's see how he instructed his army before the Battle of Safin. 
So Imam Ali alayhi salam says, do not start fighting. Do not fight them until they start fighting you. Because by the grace of God, you are right. Waiting till they begin fighting you is another defense from your side. If they are defeated by the will of God, do not kill those who run away and do not strike the helpless. Do not finish off the wounded and do not inflict pain on women. In response to his immense kindness, the adversaries were always harsh, insulting, conspiring against him. On many occasions, his foes would stand before him in the battlefield like dark knights covered with iron shields. Yet, we find armless Imam Ali salam standing there before them with respect to mankind as his armor, justice as his spear, and the Quran as his sword. His hope was always that his enemies may drop the call for violence and revert to negotiation and reason. There were many documented incidents where he cried for his army in bare hands, urging them not to fight and to save themselves. His reasoning with the hypocrites was drawn from logic, the Quran, and the Prophet Wasallam's hadith sayings. Yet their answer was drawn from hate and greed. They plotted against him. They responded to his kindness, his mercy, his compassion, his justice, his benevolence with plots to alienate him from the society and deprive him of the opportunity to educate and lead. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest issue that was faced by Islam. This is where the foundation started becoming weak and weak and weaker by the day. That's why today we see that most of the Muslims, they don't know the real Islam. They don't know what being a Muslim means. So the primary definition of being a Muslim is that you don't harm another human being with your actions, with your hand, with your tongue, with any of your deeds. That's the definition of being a Muslim. But these people, these hijackers of the religion, and there's this saying, there's this tradition, this, uh, this narration by Imam Musa Qazim salam, our seventh Imam, that Allah, God, once said to Hazrat Dawood salam, the Prophet David salam, warn your people against those leaders, those guides who are greedy for this world who want the wealth, the riches, the positions of this world, who are after worldly possessions, never to make them your leaders, never to take their guidance in religion, because actually they're not guides, they're not leaders, they're not friends. They are actually thieves. They're actually robbers who rob you of your faith. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, today, even a Muslim who believes in Allah, even a Muslim who recites the Kalma, who says there's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the last Prophet, and even those who believe in the Imamat of Malai Kainat Mawlai and say, that Imam Ali salam, is the successor, the wali after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even those people, they just say it as words. They don't believe 
in making Allah, the only Allah, the primary, the primary objective, the primary wish, the primary desire, the one and only master that as a Muslim, as a believer, you're supposed to please. They are mostly either worshipping their own ego, the wealth of the world, positions in this world, or all the worldly possessions that we can name. And why has this happened? Because the true concept of Tawheed, the true concept of the oneness of Allah, that was somewhere lost when Islam was hijacked by those in position of power, by those whose only goal, whose only objective, whose only desire was to gain power, wealth, and this dunya. And they infected others by satiating their greed, by either forcing them through the fear of their lives, like what happened in Karbala. What did Yazid do? He bribed people, he fed their greed, and he, he uh, forced some people who were afraid for their lives not to stand up for the truth, not to stand up for Imam Hussain alayhi salam, not to stand up, not to stand up for Tawheed, for the oneness of God, for the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the belief in the prophethood and for belief in imamat and vilayat. And who is harmed the most by this hijacking of the religion? Muslims themselves, Islam itself. So most of the world now has this false concept of Islam, that this is a religion which is spread by sword, by force, by torturing people, Islam is the opposite. The greatest, bravest fighter of Islam, for Islam, Imam Ali salam. Qarar Ghair Farar, who never fled from a battlefield, who was steadfast, who was the one responsible for protecting the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, from early childhood, following the footsteps of his grandfather, Hazrat Abdul Mutlib and his father, Hazrat Abu Talib Imam Ali salam, who was the bravest, one strike of whose Zulfiqar is considered superior to worship of thousands of years of both worlds. Even he prefers peace, even he prefers not to fight, even he prefers to settle, to sign peace treaties with the enemies wherever possible. He does not believe in starting a war. He does not believe in bloodshed. He wants to avoid bloodshed at any cost. That's what we see in the life and the history of Imam Hassan salam. That's what we see and witness for all the Imams, the 12 Imams. Every Imam was tortured, poisoned, captivated, they were held in prison in such cruel conditions. But when we see the lives of these Imams, they have always preached the message of love, compassion, humanity, which is and which only is the true Islam. The true Islam invites us to worship one God. And how do we worship one God? By being honest, by being kind. As the sixth Imam, Imam Jafri Sadiq salam, says, what is kufr? What is denial of God? What is the opposite of Iman? What is the opposite of Islam? He says there are three pillars that are the foundation of kufr. That is denial of Allah. That is denial of Tawheed. So what are the three main pillars, he says, are the foundation of kufr, foundation of being anti 
Allah, being anti-Islam, being anti-belief, being anti-Iban. What are the three main pillars? He says, pride, arrogance, takabur, lalaj, greed, and hasad, jealousy. Pride, arrogance, greed, the love of wealth of this world, and arrogance, and jealousy. Not wanting what you want for yourself, not wanting the same for your brother. This, this is the basis of the teaching of Islam. This is the basis of Iman. That you are not arrogant, you are not in love with yourself in a way that you start worshipping your own ego, your own self becomes your idol. That you don't love and desire the wealth of this world so much that you become greedy. And you don't feel ill about the good, the blessings that come to your brother. That you are not envious. That you are not jealous. So what is Islam? Islam is the goodness and the purity of heart. Islam is love. Islam is compassion. Islam is peace. Islam believes in being human. It is the religion that is the closest to human nature. That's why the Quran says, Inna dina in the Islam. Indeed, the religion for Allah is only Islam. Why? Because it is so close to the human nature. Just being honest, just being kind, just smiling for your fellow brother or sister, for a fellow human being, just smiling for them is considered an act of charity. Just working for an honest living, just being hardworking, just being honest, just having a conscience, having integrity is considered higher than praying Salat and fasting. Halal risk, earning a livelihood with honesty is considered a virtue that is superior than praying, kneeling, prostrating in front of Allah and fasting. It is considered superior. Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamullah says that a woman who is a mother, she is the closest to Allah when she is in her home, nurturing, taking care of, protecting her child. Such a basic, such a basic thing, a motherly instinct that comes naturally to a woman when she becomes a mother. It is considered Cause it is considered a way of a woman getting the closest to Allah she can be. Just imagine what an easy religion this is. Just earning, working hard, earning an honest living. That is considered the highest virtue. Being a woman, being a mother, taking care of your child that comes naturally to you, taking care of an infant or baby or even a toddler in your home, giving good values to your child, nurturing your child, just providing your child with food, love, care, nourishment. That brings you the closest to Allah. Just imagine how simple, how easy this religion is. Just giving a smile to a fellow human being, that's considered such a high act of charity good deed. So where did we lose our path? Where did we lose the sirat mustaqim the straight path? When were we deviated? When was Islam disfigured? We have to go back and look at the history of Islam and look at how Prophet Muhammad wasallam, even before he announced the revelation of the Quran, even before he brought the message of Allah to light, and pre started preaching to the people. He was known as Sadiq and Amin, the one who is honest, 
the one who is honest, the one who fulfills his promises, the one who is amin, who never deceives anyone. So that is the personality of our Prophet He used to take care of the poor, the underdogs of the society, those who were slaves, those who were tormented. He uplifted those who were considered as the lowest in the social status, who were considered as the poorest, who were not considered worthy of an equal stature, but he said no, no black or white are different. No white is superior to a black and vice versa. Nobody can be superior, held superior, considered superior to the other based on their wealth or their worldly status or the name of their family. He said no Arab is superior to an Ajam. Nobody from Arab or Iran or from one country or another, from one bloodline or another can be considered superior to the other. Only based on their deeds, only based on how pious one is. So this is the basis of the religion of Islam. The basis, you don't harm a fellow human being, not with your tongue, not with your hand, not with any of your actions. The Prophet Muhammad is one. When there was a non-believer woman who used to throw garbage, trash on the Prophet when he used to go through a certain alley, she would throw trash, garbage on the Prophet He never said anything to her. Three days she kept doing it. And when the fourth day the, the Prophet went through the same path and there was nobody throwing garbage or trash on him. He actually went to check on that lady and found that she was ill. He took care of her. He served her, took care of her, fed her, gave her food, water, looked after her and what happened she converted to islam this is how people converted to islam this is how people started believing in allah in god when they saw that this prophet وسلم, is so kind his heart is so full of love he would say salam to children first he would greet the children first he would sit with the slaves he would never assert himself. He would never be arrogant to anyone. He would never force anyone to change their beliefs. Even the Quran says that those who worship other gods don't say anything ill about their gods, lest they start saying bad things about your God. So just imagine how simple, how peace promoting, how peace loving, how humanitarian, is this religion of Islam and how easy it is to be a good human being and how easy it is to become a good Muslim just by being a good human being. Allah says that he forgives the Hukukullah. He can forgive the rights that he that we have that we owe him. He, he can forgive that Hukukullah, his rights on us as a creator. He can forgive namaz. He can forgive fasting, he can forgive prayers, but he says he won't forgive Hakukulibad, the obligations, the responsibilities you have towards other human beings. Whether in relationships, whether it's your neighbor, because the tradition says that the Prophet emphasized so much on the rights of your neighbor. You should not have a full stomach and sleep when your neighbor is hungry. The tradition says that there was such emphasis on fulfilling the rights of your neighbor and taking care of your neighbor that most of the believers, this, they thought that maybe the neighbor is going to be given a right in inheritance. 
So this is how much Islam promotes compassion, being human, being good to your fellow human beings, being a positive member, being a loving, kind, compassionate, helpful member of the society. This is what Islam is all about. It is not about how much prayers you offer, how many prayers you offer during the day, how much you fast, because Allah has got angels, as the Quran says, who are just busy in worshipping him 24-7. But he created human beings, gave them his own soul, nafaktu fihi min ruhi. So when I blow my own soul into this human body, the angels were asked to prostrate in front of Hazrat Adam as So as soon as I put my own spirit, my own soul into this human body, made of clay, I order all you angels to prostrate, do sajda in front of Adam. What's the purpose? The purpose is that this human heart is filled with the awareness of Allah, the presence of Allah, the presence of God. And how does that happen? By keeping the heart pure, by not lying, by being honest, by being compassionate, by having this love of Allah enabling you to love your fellow human beings. You do good to others because you want to please Allah, not because you want to be known or applauded for your good deeds, not because you want to be uh, known as a great person, not because you want to satiate your own ego, or feed your own arrogance, but only because you love your fellow human beings because you love Allah. So there are several sayings that endorse this concept. Imam Ali salam, like he says, that when somebody who is generous, when somebody who always helps other people, even if they fall down, even if they face failures in life, they would still rise up. So there's a saying by Imam Ali salam. Imam Ali salam says, overlook and forgive the weakness of generous people. Who are generous people? The one who give to others, the one who give to please Allah, the one who give to others to alleviate their problems, their hunger, their poverty. So Imam Ali says, overlook and forgive the weaknesses of generous people, because if they fall down, hand of God lifts them. So today, let us reflect on how this religion of peace, this religion, Islam, the literal word, the literal meaning of the word being peace, how was the image tainted? How was its, the face disfigured so much that people now associate Islam with cruelty, terrorism. The religion where you're not even allowed to harm your enemy who's not willing to fight. The religion where even your worst enemy, Imam Ali was even kind to Ibn Muljim Maloon, who struck him with his sword poison sword while he was in sajda. He instructed not to tie him with cruelty. He instructed to give him 
juice, refreshments. He instructed not to strike him more than once. So there's no tyranny. There's no cruelty. There's no room for injustice in Islam. Forgiveness is always considered the best, even forgiving your enemy. Imam Ali salam says, when you forgive your enemy, it will give you, when you are, be, you are being kind to your enemy, it will give you either of the two advantages. It would either turn him into your friend, and even if not, it would reduce his hostility towards you. And the purity of heart, the concept of Tawheed, as Bibi Fatima Zahra Alayhi, said in her Khutbah Fidr, that the awareness of Tawheed, belief, the oneness of God, Iman, has been put in your hearts. So this heart, as the Imams said, is your most prized, precious possession. Don't let it get tainted by anything. You have to keep your heart pure. You cannot think ill about anyone. You have to guard your thoughts. You have to keep your heart pure of any sort of ill will, resentment. You have to forgive people as the Quran says. These are the ones who forgive people. And these are the ones who know how to control, suppress the anger. So we must learn to forgive our fellow human beings. Yes, we must stand up for the truth. Yes, we must raise voice against cruelty because our Imams have said that one who stays quiet when oppression is being done, the one who says nothing to the oppressor, they are actually an accomplice. They are exactly like those who are the oppressors. So one has to stand up for the truth. One has to raise the voice when there's cruel, when there is cruelty, when there is oppression, with when there is somebody's rights have been usurped, we must stand up for that. But we must believe in peace. The objective should be to defend the human rights of the people and not to create fitna or chaos or disruption or dispute. Because according to the Quran, creating fitna or dispute or disruption or disturbing peace is worse than murder. So in this holy month of Ramadan, let us pray that Allah helps us understand this religion truly and help us take the guidance, enable us to be guided by those who Allah loves, those who are the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, those who are the holders of wisdom and knowledge. Rabbi Zidni Ilma, God, please increase our knowledge. Please allow us to understand this religion, allow us to be advocates of peace, love, compassion, humanity in this world. Allow us to become the human beings that you intended us to be, kind, loving, generous, forgiving. And let us be steadfast in fighting cruelty and fighting for the rights of our fellow human beings. Let us not be derailed by the worldly desires, by greed, wealth, our own egos. God, we pray to you in the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your beloved Prophet. Please forgive all our sins. Please allow us to become the believers as you intended us to be. And please allow us to become the true advocates of this religion by practicing 
this religion of peace, love, and brotherhood, and then showcasing through our own character, through our own deeds, what a good Muslim is and what Islam truly stands for. Mama alayna illa al-bala, lanatullah yala kaumiz zalameen, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you.